everyone, what is up? My name is Haley. Welcome to my YouTube channel. If you don't know, no, you do. Hey guys, what's up? So in today's video, y'all, um, I'm going to be giving my unwanted humble opinion about buying your first luxury handbag. But before we get into all of that, y'all, I just wanted to give you an update because it's been like three weeks since I've posted on this channel and I'm sorry about that. A lot has been going on in my public and not public, my private and personal life. And I'm slowly getting back into the swing of things. Um, I have new hair. I'm in the weird transition phase of my twa, which is teeny weeny afro for people that do not know, um, <laughs> where I'm trying to let it grow out. And it's that weird length that it's too long to look good but it's too short to actually style it, if that makes sense. If you know, you know. And so grace the heavens for the lady that was able to slap these braids onto my scalp. <laughs> um, and hopefully when I take them out, it'll maybe have grown like half an inch. <laughs> so I think that's all, just half an inch. And so yeah, with all that being said, don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. And if you wanna have a conversation down below in the comment section, we are, or you are more than welcome to, and I will most likely respond. So your first luxury handbag purchase. I believe that I made my first purchase in 2017, if I am not mistaken. Um, I don't remember if it was my favorite, my Dionysus or my Faye. I always get the confused because they were purchased at around the same time and so let's just say it was one of those bags and they were all in my opinion from very decent um, luxury designer brands now this is also you know preference and opinion some people don't consider Gucci um, as good a brand as Louis Vuitton a lot of people don't consider Chloe as good a brand as Gucci or Louis Vuitton um, and so the opinions and what not what may have you really irrelevant for me because this is my video and my opinions and my preference <laughs> and what I think on it and so those three brands in my opinion were pretty like average and above average for luxury handbags and at the time i purchased them all for less than a thousand bucks so i got everything at a decent price which in my opinion is very important when buying your first luxury handbag um, because you should have a i call it the birkin budget and this is just something that i made up in my head y'all it's the amount of money that you would spend on like your top like dream bag like realistic dream bag because <laughs> Do I believe that or do I dream of a Himalayan croc Birkin? Um, maybe. Am I going to get that? Probably not. But my attainable, how do you say, dream bags, there's a certain cap or limit that I would spend for those items. And so back in the day for me, that was sitting at around the $1,000 or Euro price mark. When you're in luxury, it's good to have a buffer of a couple hundred bucks because, you know, take Louis Vuitton as an example. A lot of times you go into the store, you wanna buy a bag, you see it in canvas, and then you see it in leather. The leather version is only a couple hundred bucks more. And you're like, well, you know what? I can afford a couple hundred bucks more and I prefer the leather, leather over the canvas because it's a superior, um, material that's up for debate <laughs> um, so it's okay to have a little buffer or cushion of what you would spend but as long as you're not saying my max is two grand um, but then you're going around spending five thousand on something that wasn't even on your radar I think another reason to have a max price um, is a simple fact that you don't even know if you like luxury and this is something that a lot of people that are on social media do not talk about when buying luxury brands, um, there's a lot of, I don't want to say regret or remorse, um, but sometimes the high of purchasing something <laughs> uh, disappears, evaporates relatively quickly after you've swiped your card, after you've brought it home, you've placed it down on your dresser, on your floor, you've left it there, um, and the excitement is gone. A lot of people do not talk about that, but it does happen. And so at the end of the day, you don't know if you're that type of person or not. Luxury could not be for you. It might not be for you. It could be something that um, you don't understand the hype after purchasing something, spending a whole bunch of money, and you're like, I don't understand why people like this because I can get a better bag at this brand for half the price. I don't like the experience of shopping in luxury retailers. Um, I don't enjoy this or that about luxury shopping or luxury items. And so luxury might not be for you and that's totally okay. A lot of people don't understand that it's fine to not like those things. <laughs> like 
there's nothing wrong with it. If you don't like it, you don't like it. If you like it, you like it. Good for you. Do what makes you happy. But like I said, I'd much rather make the mistake of not liking luxury after a $2,000 purchase than a $10,000 purchase. Just let that sit there with y'all a little bit. So the next thing I'm going to be talking about is not allowing someone's illegitimate complaint sway your preference or opinion on a bag. Now, I think watching videos of people's, um, how do you say, like pros and cons and reviews of bags, I do them myself, is... Um, a good thing. You should watch that to become just introduced and educated about a bag, about a luxury experience, about shopping, about an item. You should do that. You have a lot of resources available on YouTube and just anywhere else on the internet. But you should not let people say things like, oh, don't buy that bag because I don't like it. If they're not giving you a legit complaint, don't listen to what someone says. Let's say you've been in love with the YSL Sac de Jour. If I'm pronouncing it wrong, sorry, I'll put a picture so you guys know what bag I'm talking about. Let's say you've loved this bag for years and you've been saving up money to purchase it. And then you finally stumble upon a video that says pros and cons, watch this before buying the bag. You watch it and the girl says, I don't like this bag at all. I don't think that you should purchase it. That's all she says. Cause there are a lot of people on here on YouTube, luxury influencers, shopper influences, influencers that do this um, and they give you no reason as to why it's so bad just that they don't like it and they prefer the YSL puffer let's just stay in brands <laughs> and you think to yourself oh well she doesn't like the YSL sac de jour I trust her as an influencer maybe it is a bad bag maybe I should think about the puffer that's not horrible per se, but don't let your preferences and opinions be swayed by influencers. I think that's like the biggest thing because at the end of the day, they are buying things to follow a trend usually and not really someone like you and myself that <laughs> we can't afford to buy a bag every single month. If someone that has 500,000 followers on TikTok, YouTube, Instagram, whatever, um, if they don't like a bag after a month, they can usually afford to buy a new one. But someone like myself, uh, we can't do that. And so you need to buy a bag that A, matches your personality, who you are, your style, your everything about you, um, and keep it moving. Now, if someone, a legitimate complaint was said, I don't like the sac de jour because the strap is too short. Um, the top handle doesn't like feel nice. It's too compact. It's too compartmentalized. Uh, I can't put my iPhone, uh, iPhone pro max inside. That is a legit reason as to why you should maybe rethink the bag. Um, if any of those are red flags for you, just going, trying on the bag, making sure that you've checked off all of the boxes that you needed to check off on. Um, but like, keeping that information that has been said, those cons that have been said, putting them in your brain and being able to, I guess, address them when you actually go into the boutique and try out the bag itself. The next point is know your color theme. And I think this is <laughs> very hard. And this is some like opinion and advice that I need to take for myself because I have purchased some bags in the past that are particular colors that I do not wear, that I rarely wear. I love colors, I think they're beautiful, but when it comes to bags, I realize that I'm a very boring person, that I like neutrals, um, maybe pastels, but when it comes to limes, brights, that kind of stuff, it's not for me. There is a bag at YSL, and I think I just love YSL in this video, y'all, that's who I'm sticking with today, and it is the, I think, Nikki in lime green. I don't know the exact color, like a greenish yellow color, beautiful color, wonderful color. I was so close to just purchasing it on a whim, but I had to sit back and say, you will never wear this bag. You will never wear this color. Even though it is beautiful, even though you love it, you would never ever wear it. And it is true. I don't even wear my Marc Jacobs um, J-Link bag in the light, uh, like sort of pastel-ish green color that I purchased in. I don't even wear that bag let alone would I wear a freaking neon green YSL Nikki bag that is like, I don't know if it's almost $3,000 or something like that. I would never do it. And so the next point is going to be to not purchase something to resell it. And I think for a lot of people, this is hard to hear because I don't know if this is like something that was put out by luxury brands or luxury influencers to maybe feel better about themselves for spending a whole bunch of money on items. <laughs> because at the end of the day, 
is not the truth in like a tiny like slither fraction of luxury it is the truth but in the whole bigger picture of luxury it's not do not try to buy an item to resell it thinking that you're going to make a huge return on investment that you're going to make this purchase and from this purchase you're going to make a 20 30 40 50 percent 100 percent profit from this purchase because you're most likely not going to and so you need to focus on buying something that is actually wearable something that is actually usable something that has longevity something that you could maybe pass down because I think a lot of people they don't think about the future when it comes to luxury they think about the right now they think about the present and they think about um, how they can profit off of this right now or how they can make the most out of this right now but in reality you need to think of how that will be able or how that item will be able to um, go throughout your phases of life will it be able to go with you throughout all of the different phases that you are going to face and let's say 10 years 20 years 30 years time um, are you going to get a bag and you're going to use it until it breaks that's perfectly fine that's decent buy something to wear it do you want a bag that's going to last you that you can maybe give to a child that you have or a sibling or a family member of some sort so instead of trying to sell the bag to make a profit think of how to purchase that bag or how to make that purchase um, price per wear as low as it possibly can be and how to get as much life out of the bag as you possibly can that's how I go into thinking or how I go into purchasing a bag it's like do I see myself using this bag in the future I would say for 70 to 80 percent of my purchases I think like that because I want something that A is going to match my style in 10 to 20 years. I want something that's going to last for 10 plus years. I want something where the price per wear, like I said, 70, 80 y'all, not 100% because it's certainly not. But I want something that I'm actually using it um, and it's not sitting in my closet collecting dust. Um, and I don't want the, how do you say, volatility, is that the right word, of the luxury market crashing one day and then I get no return on investment from any of these things. But I would be fine with that because I know that I purchased them to use them and not to resell them. And so for me, I'm getting my money's worth out of the items. So the last and final point, I'm gonna to try to rush through this y'all, is that you need to base your purchase or you should maybe think about basing your purchase on popular non-luxury branded bags that you own. Um, and like I said, luxury for everyone is different. So if you have a Michael Kors Jet Set travel tote, that is your bag that you love y'all. My Michael Kors Jet Set, I had the studded version of this bag, love this bag. I knew since I own that bag, use that bag like crazy that I would love the Neverfull. I love my Neverfull. I love my Longchamp bags. They're all totes bags. So I knew that I would love a tote. Do I prefer a cute little mini bag? Of course, but I knew I would get use out of the Neverfull because I based it on the simple fact that I use my Michael Kors Jet Set travel tote um, through and through. And so if you have a particular brand that you like that maybe isn't as expensive, expensive as like the next tier of luxury that you're looking at, you should look at what is very popular in your closet right now and go for the luxury version of that or the more elevated version of that because it could be that you're going, like I said, from Chloe to Chanel. You could be making that type of jump instead of making a jump from Michael Kors to Louis Vuitton. You could be making a jump from Michael Kors to um, Hermes. Don't know what your budget is, don't know what your wallet looks like, but that could be where you're sitting. And so I just think that you know already deep down what works for you. And granted, shopping at luxury stores might be a little bit different of experience, but when you boil it down to like the nitty gritty, you're still just buying a bag. And so what bag works for you? You already know what your budget is. You already know what your color theme is. So what bag do you want? What bags have you already owned that work for you? and then plug that in to whatever brand you're looking at. Gucci, YSL, Mulberry, Chloe, Chanel, Hermes, Fendi, I, the Loewe, the, the list goes on. There's so many different, Miu Miu, I don't know what your brand, Prada, y'all. There are so many different brands that you can choose from, but you, you know what I'm talking about. And so, yeah. <laughs> With that being said, this video is extremely long. I hope it helps one. I hope this was a nice way to get back into uploading. Um, I'll see you guys soon in my next upload. I love y'all. Thank you so much for watching and bye.